Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this video, we'll talk about another class of algae and that is Rhodophyta or Rhodophyceae. Rhodophyceae, which is commonly known as red algae. We also know them as Rhodophyta. Now, as the name tells us, they are red due to presence of certain pigments. So, let us first talk about the pigments which are found in them. The pigments are chlorophyll A, chlorophyll D and phycoerythrin and this phycoerythrin is the red pigment. Now, it is not always that the red alga is red. The color of the alga changes depending upon its location in water. It is an aquatic uh, alga and it is normally found in all oceans. Now, when we talk of the color, if the red algae is found in deep water, then the color is red. That means it has more of rhodo, oh sorry, more of phycoerythrin. That means this pigment is more and due to which the alga appears red. Now what is the reason of this? We know that there are pigments which have the capacity to absorb a particular wavelength. So this red pigment that is phycoerythrin, it absorbs the green wavelength, normally the blue-green wavelength. So we can write the blue-green wavelength and this blue-green wavelength can penetrate into deeper waters. So if the alga is in deeper water, this is the wavelength which is going to be available for it and the pigment which can absorb this wavelength is red. So in deeper water, the red algae is going to be red. In shallow water, the red algae is going to appear green. And this is because of more chlorophyll. So here there is more chlorophyll because of which it appears green. Now why is it green when it is found in the shallower water? Because it is going to absorb the red wavelength which is absorbed by this green pigment that is chlorophyll. So color of the red alga changes depending upon the depth in water. So these are the pigments which are found in this red algae. We will first write few examples of red algae and then when we come to economic importance, we will take these examples again. Gelidium, Gracilaria, Porphyra, Chondrus, Chondrus which is commonly known as Irish Moss, these are some common examples of red algae. Now, in case of red algae, the stored food material, the stored food is in the form of fluoridian starch. This fluoridian starch is a carbohydrate and which resembles or it is very much similar to amylopectin and glycogen. So it is similar to these two substances that is amylopectin which is a component of starch and glycogen. So it resembles this. Now the next thing is the cell wall. The cell wall has multiple things that is it has cellulose also. It also has pectic material and some sulfates also. So cell wall is not purely cellulose, it has other substances along with cellulose. So pigment we know, the reserve or the stored food also we are aware of and the cell wall because it is a plant, so plant has to have a cell wall 
only thing is instead of pure cellulosic material, there are other things which are deposited in it. And the color also is variable. This we have seen and the reason for it. The members of red alga, they are the most showy plants. Showy means they have lace-like appearance and they look very beautiful. And that's why we call them that they are showy plants. Let us take another important thing that is reproduction. In case of red algae, reproduction is again by three methods. One is vegetative, then asexual and third is sexual reproduction. Vegetative reproduction takes place by fragmentation. That means the main body or the main plant breaks into parts or pieces and each part is capable of giving rise to new plant. Asexual reproduction is by formation of non-motile spores and sexual reproduction is by formation of non-motile gametes and it is oogamous type of reproduction. Oogamous means the egg is stationary, the male gamete is non-motile but is carried to the uh, female gamete and the female gamete is larger. So this is how this reproduction, sexual reproduction takes place. Now one thing which we have noticed here is that the spores are also non-motile and the gametes are also non-motile. That means in case of red algae, there are no flagellate structures. We can write this here that there are no flagellate structures. Normally, the spores or the male gamete, they have flagella for moving from one place to another. But in this case, the gametes as well as the spores which are produced, they are non-motile. So there are no filamentous structures which are present. Now let us come to these examples and see what, exa what substances we get from them. From Gelidium and Gracilaria, these two, Gelidium and Gracilaria, are commercially used to obtain agar, which is used to make the nutritive medium solid. So the agar agar or agar which we normally use is obtained from Gelidium and Gracilaria on a commercial scale. Porphyra is edible. And it is also added into soups and some vegetables in the form of a flavoring agent. Conrus or Irish moss is also edible and it is used as food. The reason why we call it Irish moss, moss is undifferentiated body and because it was used during Irish famine as food. Now one more substance which is extracted from all red algae that is known as carabenin. It is actually a hydrocolloid. It is obtained from all red algae and it is used in making chocolate milk. Now what exactly is the use? When we add some chocolate syrup or something into milk and if we do not stir, stir it properly then that thick syrup settles. But in case of the ready-made chocolate milk which we get in the market which is packaged, we don't have to shake that bottle or that container because the chocolate which is in, that, in milk does not settle. And that is because of this carogenin which prevents this chocolate powder or chocolate syrup from settling down. So this is also obtained from a red alga. So these are the substances which we obtain from various red algae on commercial level and we keep using them for various purposes. So red algae, the structure, the body of the plant is complex but we don't have to discuss all those detailed structures because that is not in our syllabus. Only things those we have to remember are that there are three methods of reproduction and the most important is the economic importance and these examples. So this is about rhodophysy. 
In the next part, we'll take up brown algae.